Lullaby Cave by Author Unknown. You have a challenger, miss. Sabrina opened her eyes. She'd been meditating peacefully until the young psychic interrupted. His words made her stomach lurch. She hadn't had any visions about this one, which was unusual. At least she couldn't see anything strange about the future. She didn't see anything at all, in fact. It's late. We're already closing. Send him away. Yes, but he's already defeated all of our trainers, and will be arriving here shortly. Fine. Sabrina clenched her teeth. It would be unreasonable to turn someone away who had come so far, so she couldn't. You may go. The psychic hesitated to leave, wondering if he had said something to upset her. But that was unlikely. If she was visibly disturbed, it wouldn't be over anything he could have done, would it? And... She glanced at the teleport tile that the challenger would soon be appearing from. The uneasy feeling in her stomach spread to her chest. Tell the others they're dismissed for the night as well. Yes. The boy bowed and vanished with a soft buzz from the exit tile, leaving the gym leader alone with her thoughts. Sabrina closed her eyes, intending to quietly wait for the challenger's arrival. Only an instant after she dropped her guard, she felt a jarring presence that made her eyes shoot back open. It was just a boy that had startled her, and her heartbeat slowed back to a healthy pace. He seemed normal enough, wearing a bright red hat and shaggy black hair that hid most of his face from her, the latest style, perhaps. But Sabrina hadn't heard the telltale buzz of the teleporters she designed. The boy wasn't standing near the entry tile to her room. It would be unreasonable to assume things, so she didn't. Instead, she observed him, like she did every stranger she met, absorbing every detail about his appearance. She noticed with some alarm the red marks on his wrists and the slightly faded scars around his neck. Perhaps he was an abused child? That wouldn't be too unlikely. She couldn't really sense anything from him, so it would be unreasonable to assume. You're different from most who come here. She raised a Pokeball with her mind. Will you win? I can't tell. The challenger remained silent and released his Pokemon. It was one that she hadn't seen before. It seemed like a ghost type. She registered with some irritation. In what seemed like no time at all, she was forced to send out her second-to-last Hypno. She reached for his Pokeball and opened it. To her surprise, nothing came out. How did an empty ball end up on my belt, she wondered, much more agitated than before. Where the hell is Hypno? This was his Pokeball. She could still feel lingering remnants of his unique aura inside of it. She couldn't think of any logical explanation, and she couldn't make any telepathic communications with the Pokémon. Where's Hypno? the boy asked, his words mirroring her own thoughts. His soft, raspy voice made Sabrina shiver. I want to see him. He's in the PC. I plan on replacing him soon. She lied, because there was no time to figure it out. She was still in the middle of a battle, making her opponent wait would have been unreasonable. Too bad. He was my favorite, he said. Tell him I said hello, please. Her throat was dry. Her palms were sweaty. She didn't know why, though, but she couldn't put a name to whatever it was she was feeling. Something like anxious. Something like nervous. It was certainly something. She sent out Alakazam. Alakazam went down with one hit, and Sabrina realized that she couldn't remember hearing the trainer call out an attack even once. She realized that she couldn't remember what any of the attacks looked like. Just sending her Pokémon out, watching them faint, recalling them, repeating the process. You really weren't like the others, she said, her voice a little unsteady. The formless apprehension that had lain in the back of her mind since she had heard of his arrival was now a blood-chilling something, and she didn't even know why she felt so... something. Slowly, she approached him, since he didn't seem to want to move. Slowly, she reached out to hand him her badge. He looked up for the first time, revealing his eyes. Bloodshot and swollen and sunken in, shrouded in dark shadows. She flinched when he lifted his hand to accept it, and he frowned. He turned and stepped towards the exit tile without another word. Sabrina released a breath she didn't know she had been holding in. Finally, she could leave. What time is it now? She asked herself. A quarter to midnight. Had the battle really lasted that long? It was only eight when she was notified of his arrival. She took a single step towards the exit tile and stopped, eyes wide. Don't leave. 
The feeling was overwhelming, almost a command from her subconscious. Don't step out. Sleep in the office tonight. Why, though? It was... it was just a formless apprehension. She hadn't had any visions. There was no logical reason to be... afraid. That's what it was. It would be unreasonable to sleep in the office just because of some ridiculous fear. She took another step towards the tile. It was only a few yards away, so why was walking suddenly difficult? Her blood was cold, but her heart was racing. Her head was swimming, trying to make sense of those irrational feelings. Sabrina clenched her fists, unwilling to let some silly emotions cow her into doing something shameful like cower in her gym from absolutely nothing. That's what she was afraid of. Absolutely nothing. She stepped onto the tile and vanished, rematerializing in the entrance of the gym as expected. She could only breathe in relief for a moment, couldn't take a step off the tile before the formless apprehension she was trying to ignore became a crushing, unbearable pain in her mind. She blacked out. She woke up lying on her stomach, sore and shivering. Where was she now? She could only see blackness darker than pitch in every direction. A cave? Her eyes adjusted after a few minutes. She reached her hand to her belt. Where were her Pokémon? Where was her cell phone? Panic finally started to set in. Her situation started to sink. The putrid smell of stale air and stagnant water told her that wherever she was, she was incredibly deep inside. Getting out would probably take a while. She couldn't see any visions about the future. Nothing at all. She couldn't sense where her Pokémon were. She couldn't sense where the hell she was in relation to the rest of the world. She decided to conserve her energy, to save her powers unless things started looking really dire. She started walking. Sabrina was exhausted now. She no longer knew how long she had been walking, how long it had been since she had woken up in this dark, cold place. Suddenly, she heard something in the distance. Music? Perhaps that would lead to the exit, or the entrance, or anything other than where she was. She followed the sound, and as she drew nearer to its source, she was struck by the familiarity of it. Kind of like the funeral music the Pokémon Tower constantly played in Lavender. A lot like it, actually, but slower. Lower pitch. Sinister. The cave was getting impossibly dark, and Sabrina was so, so very tired. Now that the music was much louder, she stopped feeling like she was actually getting closer to anything, and it terrified her. How deep was this cave? She had to have walked for miles. She collapsed onto her hands and knees. Even damp, the rocks on the ground cut into her skin, but she could hardly feel it on top of the soreness and aching pain pulsing throughout her body. The music was gradually increasing in volume, and the caves grew darker still. She could barely keep her eyes open. And then, she felt a familiar presence. Sabrina looked up. Her eyes were suddenly much better adjusted, and she could just make out the silhouette of... something, standing just a little ways ahead. Laying beneath the something was something she was sure to be a person, motionless. She could... she could sense that that person was restrained, and that knowledge stopped her dead in her tracks. Slowly, so slowly, the figure approached her, and she felt a paralyzing fear grip her heart that she couldn't explain. Before long, it was only an arm's length away, towering above her. It reached out a hand, and she saw a dangling, glowing circle begin to swing. Hypno, she breathed, unable to do anything else. She tried to close her eyes, tried to break contact with his, but she was already trapped. She slumped forward and fell, succumbing to the hypnosis. Physically asleep but completely conscious in her mind, Sabrina vividly felt herself being dragged through the dirt and sharp rocks. She felt herself being carelessly tossed at a rugged wall, then bound with thick ropes around her wrists. After what seemed like an eternity of waiting for something, anything to happen, Lavender Town's signature music stopped abruptly, and she stirred. Hypno was inches away from her face, like it had been sitting there, staring for some time. Just waiting for her to wake. Even from so close, it was so dark that she couldn't see its eyes. Her heart beat wildly in her chest, and from this close, she could sense that he could hear it. She could sense that he liked that. She didn't like that. Sabrina threw up a light screen and shoved it in his face with all her mental strength. Being terrified helped. 
Every ounce of desperation helped. Hypno staggered backwards and she ripped through her restraints with help from her powers, not caring that the coarse ropes shredded her skin. There was another person beside her. No time to think. She tore him from the wall and limped away as fast as she could manage. Not fast enough, she knew. She had left him behind. Not nearly fast enough. Something large and heavy hit her in the back of the head. A boulder, maybe. <clears throat> her vision flashed red as she crashed to the ground, the other person tumbling out of her hands. She scrambled to her feet, ignoring the protest of her aching, bleeding body. She whirled around in time to get hit in the face with something else, something smaller and sharper. She stumbled but kept on her feet, and with the last of her energy teleported just a few yards away. Only desperation and adrenaline allowed her to make it that far, and she knew it. And Hypno knew it. She was so exhausted, she limped away as fast as she could manage. Not fast enough. Sabrina groaned. Her fingers scraped through the dirt, trying to find purchase. She strained to support herself on shaking hands and knees. Now she knew why she couldn't see any future. There was no future. She knew she couldn't stand, so she didn't bother trying. She heard soft footsteps and the scratchy, scraping sound of something being dragged across the ground. Oh, my master was not clever. Hypno was speaking in her mind. She didn't care, though. Should she? Should anyone care that she was missing? More than cuts and the breaks and the bruises, it hurt to think no one would. Perhaps someone. Now she'll stay with me forever. That was Lullaby Cave. Final thoughts? Overall very well written, but with a bit of a weak ending. I find that creepypasta written from the perspective of the characters in the game tend to be much more competent than the average one from the player's perspective, and this is no exception. The vocabulary is extensive, the character of Sabrina is completely fitting, and they do a good job of setting the atmosphere. I think that if there's anything negative I can say about the story, it's that the ending is a bit weak. It can be very creepy having a lot of things simply hinted at, but never knowing for sure, like the body for instance, but I feel like too much was left up to interpretation, and that's a rare thing to happen. Simply having a hint as to the purpose of the Dark Trainer, the reason for Hypno's actions, or the identity of the body would be nice, either in the form of Sabrina finding something, or even just speculating something, but to have all three main questions left absolutely up in the air with no direction seems a bit weak. Other than that, it was very well written and a very enjoyable story. That's it for this Creepypasta and the first day of the second Seven Days of Creepypasta special. Tomorrow, I'll be tackling another highly requested story with Pokemon Fire Rapidash. If you want to write your own story, help peer edit a story, or even read the stories early, check out the description where you'll find links to the Creepypasta section of my forum. You'll also find a link to the playlist of every Creepypasta reading I've done. Also, if you're just interested in anything Pokemon related, the description will have links to my Let's Plays of Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Gold, and Pokemon Ruby. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, sweet dreams.